Hey guys, Travis Gillespie here. We've been looking at probability, and in this section we're going to look at counting methods, also sample spaces. Let's go to counting methods real quick. It sounds pretty simple, and you might be thinking, boy, oh boy, I've been doing this since elementary, and if you think about counting, it's just basically one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. It's pretty simple. But counting methods, as math gets more complicated, uh, the counting methods can uh, get more complicated as well. So there's a whole division of math that deals with counting methods, and it's called combinatorics. Let's just do a little arrow down here and write that word down, combinatorics, C-O-M-B-I-N-A-T-O-R-I-C-S. And if you're interested in it, go and take a look. But let's move on to what sample spaces are. When we're dealing with probability, sample spaces help us to find out the values for, or they help us to find that probability. And a sample space, it's uh, when you run an experiment, it's pretty much all of the possible outcomes. So what I'm going to do here is right next to sample spaces, do a little arrow. Sample spaces are all of your possible outcomes, so all of the outcomes. So let's read through this first problem and see what we can do to solve it. Okay, so it says Matt wanted to take a three-day weekend trip to visit his grandparents. He can take either Friday or Monday off from work. And he can either fly, drive, take a train, or take a bus. How many options are available to Matt? I'm going to highlight a few of the key important words in this problem. So the first thing I want to do is just look at that first sentence. It says he, uh, Matt wants to take a three-day weekend. So I'm going to just highlight three-day weekend here. He can either take Friday or he can take Monday off. Also, he can either fly, drive, take a train, or a bus. And then this last question, this last sentence here, it's asking us how many options are available to Matt. So let's just backtrack for a second. Earlier I was saying that we use counting methods to help us with probability. And counting methods are a part of this word, this uh, the division of math, combinatorics. Well, when you hear that word combinatorics, what are you thinking? In our daily lives, you use combinatorics every single day, and you might not even think about it. So let's just think of a couple of options real quick. Well, if you're waking up and going to school or going to work, you're going to probably create a lunch, or you might buy a lunch later in the day, but you're going to combine certain foods that will go well together, such as peanut butter, jelly, and bread. So those are different combinations. We might actually want to take uh, a turkey sandwich with lettuce. So you're combining different materials for your food. Or maybe you might want to wear different types of clothes or different uh, color coordinate your clothes or different patterns or different materials for your clothes if you're going to get dressed for work or, or school. Now when you go to school you might have a combination to opening up your locker or when you get home from work or home from school you might have a passcode that you have to type in a certain combination of values to uh, turn off an alarm in your house. So there's all these different types of combinations that we use in our, our daily lives. And Matt's using a set of combinations here to uh, plan a trip to see his grandparents. So let's take a look at how we can figure out all of the different types of options that are available to him. But when you hear this word options, and I want you to think of that word, comb instead of combinatorics, just think the word combinations, and let's write that down below. So when you hear the word options, think of combinations. And when you're combining things in math, one of the operations I want you to think of is multiplication. So I'm just going to put a multiplication symbol below. So if you're making combinations, think about multiplication. If you see that word options, and you're dealing with combining different things together, think about multiplication if that word options is there instead of the word combinations. So let's break this problem apart even further. Let's just talk about the different days that Matt can take off. Well, he's going to take a three-day weekend. So the first thing I want to do here is write down how many different types of three-day weekends he could have. Well, he could have, uh, let's write that word down, three-day weekends here. Three-day weekends. And his first three-day weekend he could have, well, he could take Friday off. And that means he'd have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Let's write that down. Friday through Sunday off. So he would leave Friday, come back Sunday. That's one three-day weekend right there. The other type of three-day weekend, well, he wouldn't take Friday off. He would have to take Saturday off, he would have Sunday off, and then Monday off. So that's the other three-day weekend, that Monday portion right there. Let's go and write that over off to the side. So we could have Saturday, Sunday, so Saturday through Monday off. 
and I'm just going to write M O N here. So Saturday through Monday. So this is a second three day weekend. It looks like there's one, two, three day weekends that Matt could have. So I'm going to just write that number two here. There are two three day weekends. I'm going to go back and change my pin color. Okay, so from here let's look at the different methods of travel that Matt could could uh, choose from. Matt can choose to fly, drive, take a train, or take a bus. So if he left on Friday through Sunday, he could fly, he could choose to drive, he could take a train, or he could take a bus. All right, so these are the four different methods of travel. So there are four methods of travel. Let's go ahead and write that down as well. I'm going to put a four down here. And let's actually connect this, um, this three-day weekend with each different type of, of a method of travel here. So he could take Friday through Sunday off and fly, or he could take Friday through Sunday off and drive, or he could take Friday through Sunday off and take a train, or take Friday through Sunday off and take a bus. So these are four different ways of traveling for his three-day weekend if he were to take Friday through Sunday off. However, he has another option over here. He could take Saturday through Monday off and take the same methods of travel. So I'm going to just repeat what I wrote before. F for fly, D for drive, T for train, and a big B for bus. All right, and let's go and connect those as well. So here's an, if he did not take this three-day weekend off and he chose Saturday through Monday as his three-day weekend, well, here's another option for him. So we have one, two, three, four options, a fifth option, a sixth option, a seventh option, and finally an eighth option that Matt could take for his a three-day weekend. So right now what we see here is that there are eight options available. So Matt has eight options for his three-day weekend. And the way I prove that right now is this information, what we created right here, was a tree diagram. So let's just write that down. This is a tree diagram. So this is the tree diagram that was created to find the eight options. But earlier I told you, if you see that word options or that word combination, I want you to think of multiplying uh, information together. Think of multiplication. Well, how can we take this tree diagram or the information in this tree diagram and multiply it together to get eight options? Well, simple. Let's go back over to the left side of the screen. We've already broken it up into two different options of a three-day weekend and four different options for methods of travel. So let's take two and multiply it by four. When you do that, the value you get, two times four, gives you a value of eight. So there are eight options available to Matt still. So regardless, if you choose to draw a model, such as using a tree diagram, or you choose to multiply the two values together, you should come out to get the same answer. And I just want to make one more note here. If we're looking at the tree diagram, this is the sample space below. These are all the possible outcomes that we could have.